Okay, we're on. Hey, everybody. Boy, it's a chilly afternoon here in New Hampshire. It feels like fall already. So I need to do a little warm up draw. I'm doing a warm up for Comics Camp 2020. Information over at merrickbennett.com slash comics dash camp. I'll flash that again later. So I'm doing a little draw today. I was drawing this morning. I'm working on the third volume of the Freeman Colby series. And I wanted to show you this before we start drawing here. I have this letter from uh, April 28th, 1864, that Freeman Colby wrote home. And it's a really short letter because he's about to jump on a train and head to the front uh, for about the bloodiest month of fighting this country has ever encountered, I think, uh, May into June, 1864. So I was drawing that this morning as he's writing home. Uh, this is my only chance to write as all communication is prohibited from the front. So he still hopes to get mail from home. And I was thinking of Freeman Colby heading into the, the midst of the Civil War, and he's not sure what he's going to find. He's been in Washington, D.C. for months, and he's not sure what he's going to find at the front. He says, I hope for as good luck as in the past. So far, he's been okay. So this is going to be an exciting period. I'm going to be drawing this all summer in comics camp and elsewhere. Um, and today I thought I'm thinking a lot about marching into adventure, I guess. Uh, so let's see, I'm going to set Freeman Colby over here. And I took out a big sheet of 11 by 17 paper. And I'm going to work with pencil first, and we'll do a little exercise. If you have a little uh, piece of paper and a pencil and a pen, you can draw along and do your own kind of drawing here. So I've set up my desk. I'm going to, I'm thinking of a picture I want to draw today. Um, it's going to have a ground and then I'm going to build up a little character. This isn't going to be a whole comic. This is just going to be a, a, a little character and a little design around them and then something that we can color around them. So here's my idea. We'll just put a ground in here, maybe a quarter of the way or a third of the way up the page. Put it across. It doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line. It can be bumpy ground. Maybe it's kind of dirty. This is going to be like a, an x-ray view too. So you can see down into the ground. And then right here, I'm going to put a character. It's going to be a small character. I'll just rough out the space for him. And there's going to be a heart around that character. Protective love and community. There's going to be a sort of an egg around that heart shell that can protect even that heart. And then there's going to be the world around it. All right. And down here, all around here is going to be uh, the character's ground, the character's community. So that's my rough idea right there. It's like a poster design. So I'm going to set that pencil down. Well, actually, I'll use the pencil to rough out my character. So I'm thinking today my character is going to be just a simple cartoon flower. I've been out walking on the old road by my house and it's an old closed state highway and the pavement's cracking and the plants are growing up through it. And it's so encouraging to see those, that life coming up through the cracks in the pavement. So I'll put a little flower there. And now going down into the ground here, of course, we're gonna have the roots of that flower radiating out and maybe some earthworms and some bugs and things all the stuff that lives down in there and the dots of the soil that'll be kind of messy and scribbly maybe i'll give some branches to those roots i'm pretty loose with my penciling i like to get in there and ink my details that's kind of cool so that flower is well rooted in the ground and now i'm just gonna Gently shape this heart around it. That's going to be the community and the family and the support that flower has. And then all around it, a protective circle. That might get kind of decorative. We could do like the thickness of the shell in a double line. And then maybe we'll put some, put some stars in there. And I'm going to bend the stars sort of like they're bending across that 
eggshell circle. I kind of had this image of like a night sky inside that eggshell. It's dark in there. Oh, and then around the eggshell, because it's so dark in there, around it, we'll make like a sun, flames of sun here. And the arms of the sun are kind of reaching up like flames do. That's kind of cool. I think there's gonna be grass, but the grass is behind the sun. It's not gonna get burned. So we'll put some blades of grass there. And I'm gonna sort of, I like the idea of the green of the grass and maybe we'll color some orange flames here and dark smoke coming off of those flames coming up into here. All around this flower, look at that dark smoke and then we'll put some clouds in here. And this will be blue sky up here. There we go. Now I'm gonna come in here with ink. I'm gonna come in here and do my flower. Carefully trace over those pencil lines. I could put a face on that flower if I decide I want to. I'll come in here with my black marker, protective heart, and circling that flower all the way down to the ground. Come in here and do that eggshell. I was thinking of eggs because there's a cardinal right outside my window that's laid in, made a nest and laid an egg in it. And she's sitting out there right now on that egg. I didn't realize cardinals just lay a single egg. It's a speckled egg out there. She's keeping it warm today on a cold day. I'm gonna bring all these lines going across this. I'm calling the eggshell line here. bring them down and across all of these lines, all pointing towards that center where that flower is. I'm just doing this in black ink so I can get the lines down. Then I'll, once I have it as a black and white drawing, then I'll color it, but that'll come later. Do these stars on here. I was thinking of the smoke and the flames outside this flower's shell here and thinking of it as kind of scary, frightening flames at first, it seemed like with all the smoke billowing out, but maybe, maybe I'm just gonna bring out the lines of the sun and turn that into hopefully something that brings growth. I could color in between these stars dark, or maybe I'll wait until I'm till I'm ready to color the whole thing and then I can color it sort of a dark purple or something. Now let's see. First the orderly arms of the sun. Oh, I'll do a I'll do another circle on the outside. That'll be like the the yellow orange of the sun to contrast with the purple inside. And these are the arms here and the sun around the flower. I like how they reach up like that. So these coming down this side, these are going to reach up also, so it's symmetrical. So it doesn't look like a, if these were reaching down, it would look like a buzzsaw spinning. But if they're all reaching up, it'll hopefully look like the petals of the flower reaching up. 
I like to draw things like this when I'm in between drawing my Freeman Colby pages, in between drawing stories. Just draw a design that comes to you. That's looking cool. I mean, this is a totally different kind of a page from when I'm telling a story with panels in my comics, but it's kind of nice to cleanse the palette. After I work a few hours on this, I'll set it aside and I'll draw a design that has nothing to do with it. But at the same time, you know, I'm thinking of Freeman Colby marching into danger in the middle of the Civil War and so many other people like him marching into danger in the Civil War, I'm writing home about it. Actually, you want to see something really amazing. Speaking of 1864 and the Civil War, which I've been thinking a lot about lately, I have this old reprint of a Harper's Weekly, which comes from uh, Saturday, June 4th, 1864. So Sherman's down south and huge battles like the wilderness are being fought. So these artists, this is uh, one of my favorite artists of the Civil War period, Alfred Wode is the artist. And he's drawing um, the Battle of the Wilderness out in the forest there. Now, Freeman Colby's heading down to this when he's writing this note home about to board the train. He's heading down to witness the Battle of the Wilderness. Alfred Wode was an artist who was in the uh, with the Army of the Potomac, and he was down there witnessing this too. I've gone and I've walked through these woods, and they look a lot like this now. Uh, and you can still see the trenches that were dug for these battles. It's really amazing. So I'm thinking not just of Freeman Colby and all the participants in those battles, but also artists like Alfred Wode, who are artists like us today, who went down and got involved in these intense, intense situations. Now, like I said, I'm I'm thinking I'm not going to make the flames around the sun super scary looking. I'm going to keep them kind of symbolic and, and design-ish. Just let them be like arms. These look less destructive, these flames. Our flames have turned less destructive here. They've turned into like blazing arms of creativity. This is what I want to be thinking about this summer. Moving into the summer, we're going to have a full summer of drawing. They kind of look like the blades of grass here. I'm gonna have a full summer of drawing with Comics Camp. It's gonna be really fun. I hope you can join us. While I'm drawing, I'll put that in here. MerrickBennett.com slash comics camp. We'll be going, each week we'll have a different weekly theme, different skills, different types of cartooning, different types of visual storytelling. And uh, by the end of it, everybody will be making their own mini comic series or graphic novel. I'll show you how to do that, show you how to self-publish your stuff. I'll put a couple of those seeding stalks on this grass. I'm thinking we're not gonna draw all this flame and that would look like the grass is on fire. We'll just let the grass speak for itself here. And just draw some more blades of grass a little taller. Okay, now I'm thinking I'm going down into the roots here. I'm gonna switch over to my marker and bring this heart down and bring these roots out. And I'm gonna follow these pencil lines more or less. And then all around them, we'll draw the soil, creatures, the worms and bugs and dots and dirt and fungus. Inking can be very quiet work or if you're inking with a friend or other artists, you can talk up a storm sometimes as you ink. I like to do, I'll bring some inking to um, some live draws this summer do live draws for patrons of the Patreon. You can bring what you're working on and we'll just work side by side and give each other feedback about what we're doing. It's gonna be a really important part of the summer just knowing that other people are also working on their comics. It's 
going to keep us all creative and productive. Learning new stuff all summer long. Creating new comics. You see how I'm just following these lines here. I drew this line with pencil, then I branched it out in a couple places. So now as I follow it with my ink, I don't have to think too much. I'll just follow that pencil line that I have. And if I get an idea, maybe I'll add a little root in there. Now I'll follow along the other side of that line and let the line kind of tell me where to go. But occasionally I take some digressions and diversions. There we go. And then I'm gonna come in with my thin. I'm using two inking tools here. I have my Blick water-based marker with a chisel tip and I have my flare felt tip, my Papermate flare felt tip. I use these because they're so easy to find in office supply stores or anywhere. And as you can see, they give a nice clear line that doesn't have any breaks in it. Now I'm just bringing thin lines down off those roots. Any place that looks like there's a stretch of root without a branch, I'll just add a little thin line because those roots are going they're branching all through the soil. I'm also not really tangling them. I'm not letting them touch. So they kind of fill the space a little differently. I could bring them down and tangle them all up. Oh, I wanted to draw in some earthworms. Got lots of earthworms out in my garden. That's so how you know the soil's healthy. I'll put them kind of winding around down through the roots here. And what else? Uh, some. I don't want to put a big mole or mouse or anything like that because that might make it look like somebody's going to chew the plant's roots. I'll put some little bugs in here. Nothing too specific. All right, what do I need? This is kind of a, this can take a long time, this part of putting the roots in. So I'll go a little faster here. But if you take the time and you put some attention into it, you do end up with a picture that has clearly had some details put into it. People look at your picture and they know you cared about it enough to put some details in. I'm kind of repeating the same route here over and over. I'll bring a line down, put a branch and a branch off. But these roots are all you know, reflections of the same process, just reaching, branching. That's looking cool in there, but there's some gaps. So then in those gaps, anywhere there's a white space, I'll kind of bring a root down through it, fill that white space. And it kind of darkens the whole picture, right? I see a white space right here. So I'll bring a couple branches into that, fill it out. Meanwhile, I'm kind of thinking about what's gonna happen in my sky. Is my flower with the sun around it going to be smoking? And is there going to be smoke coming up into the sky or will there just be clouds around it and open sky? And it depends on what I, how I want the fire to feel to you. If you want it to feel really hot and out of control, maybe lots of smoke, but kind of thinking, kind of thinking growing leaves might be better for this. It's, it's looking more peaceful to me here. And I kind of want to carry that piece up into the top part of the picture. Let's finish these roots and then we'll, we'll deal with that. Nice thing about a picture, it sits there and waits for you and you only have to deal with one part at a time, right? I see some white space in here. Let those roots fill it. 
I might come back here after this is all done and fill in like lots of little dots all around here for the soil. That would look kind of cool. See, what's happened here is I, I started this thinking about thinking about Freeman Colby, my character, who's an actual person who's um, served in the Civil War and his experience heading to the front in 1864. Where was my page of that? This page I was drawing just this morning. And I was thinking about him heading to the front in Virginia in 1864. And by now, I started drawing i thought of a flower maybe in danger in some way and protective love and community around it and a protective egg around it and the sun around it and carrying that that's that that to me feels like a courageous image like that flower has courage and it can do anything and and change things like freeman colby's doing going forward to change his world but it's got to have these roots here, right? I'm also thinking about where you come from and your roots. And he's writing home. That's what he's doing on this page, right? He's writing home to his family because he wants to make sure that they know he can receive letters from home while he's at the front. So he's thinking of his roots too. So I feel good spending a couple extra minutes adding in these roots because this is an important part of the picture. It's something you don't see when you just look at a flower, but it's there. And in your artwork, you can bring those things out. I think that's what this kind of cartooning is for, bringing that stuff out and discovering it yourself. I wasn't thinking about this before I started this picture. I certainly wasn't thinking about it as I drew that page of Freeman Colby this morning but it all fits together. If you really, if you pay attention enough to draw every route, I think it all fits together. I'm sitting back and finding white spaces here and around in here. So I will deal with those because those roots are gonna seek out those spaces and fill them with root to suck up whatever moisture it can find and nutrients, there is a big white space. Sometimes you have to sit back and look at it from a different angle and you'll see, oh, there's a white space. There's one. Or I like to uh, squint my eyes. I'd have to put my camera here out of focus, but I squint my eyes and look at it from an angle and I'll suddenly see, oh, look at that white space right down in there that a root can fill. Well. I can come back to this too. I can add roots for hours here and come up with a really detailed crown of roots under this flower. And like I said, I may come back and add in, let's bring in with a thick marker, let's bring in this line and I may come back and add lots more dots like the soil and the minerals and the sand. I think we've got a good, strong base for this flower now. This is cool. After, after this kind of fantasy dream image, I'll go back and be able to draw a new 1864 Freeman Colby historical page, and I'll, I'll be refreshed by this. Let's see. A couple more dots. Trying out a new microphone today. I hope the sound quality is good. I hope you can hear me. Maybe you can't hear me at all. Maybe this is just a silent movie. We'll test it out, make sure it works okay. All right, so what were we thinking? I kind of want, I kind of want some contrast because I'm thinking of this as a coloring page, right? And I want it to be. I want it to be an inspiring picture of a fragile little character who's protected and protected, maybe in danger, maybe surrounded by these flames that 
that I'm now seeing as creative flames. Um, I'm thinking I want some contrast, like some light and dark, even to color around. So I'm gonna try adding some uh, heavy black line rays around the sun. And I, I already drew this grass here, but if I come in with the black lines, I can go right over that. The trade-off, some people, when they, when they pencil, we started off penciling, right? You can see the pencil lines up here. And this is where I thought I'd have lots of black smoke around those flames. Now I'm thinking that's going to look really ominous, but I still want that contrast. So I'm going to do a row of black teeth around the sun, moving in the same way as those lighter teeth. but maybe setting off, maybe looking like a, it's gonna look like a shadow or something coming out of this sun shape. And then maybe, maybe it'll leave it as kind of open to the viewer to decide whether that's smoke or whether those are other teeth. Also creative teeth of the sun here. See, I'll put them in between each of those teeth. And that's gonna bring out that shape a little more. That's why you gotta have that contrast. You gotta have the light areas and the dark areas and they all work together. For the whole picture. Let's see. It's like the petals of a giant flower too. It's like the flower around the flower. Now I'm thinking maybe these, these tongues of flame around this sun shape, maybe they'll just reach up into the sky. Instead of smoke, it'll be just all these tongues of flame kind of designed iconic cartoon flame. That's the creative power of this, this little tiny flower growing out of its roots. I don't know. I'm changing this as I'm drawing. I'm just sort of discover it as we go. I like to think that a lot of ideas, especially story ideas, image ideas, things that are interesting, sometimes they don't live in your head, they live in a blank page and you have to put them down on paper to see what they are, right? So that's what I wanna do with you this summer. If you sign up for the comics camp, we'll be doing a lot of this. We'll be drawing some stories, drawing paneled pages like I showed you before. Let me put this out here. It's kind of cool to put your different projects alongside each other and see what different kinds of artwork you're working on. So I spend part of my day drawing stories and paneled pages, and then part of my day doodling and exploring like this picture, like we're doing right here. I said at the start, if you have some paper and you wanna draw along, you can do your own design. I like this kind of doodling because you could start and not draw a, a flower, draw something else entirely and the the community that it comes from could be under here. And then we've got a design around it here. And we've got the protective heart and the eggshell and the creative flame of the sun. I did grass and seeds and things around it. I'm working up to the sky. I'm thinking I'm gonna add one more layer. Of, these almost become like feathers at a certain point, right? feathers and teeth and flames, whatever you want to think of them as. That's the beauty of cartooning. You leave a lot of details out and it's not super specific. And the reader gets to sort of interpret what it is. I think the I like it when I think it's something, the reader thinks it's something else, but those two things together create a story. 
where those two things together are similar but not the same. I like it when readers can see something in a picture that I didn't see in it. Maybe we'll put a couple of loose pieces here. Oh, look at that. They're almost like rain droplets. Or feathers falling. Now we've come pretty far away from the original pencil drawing. I'm going to add some clouds in here like I originally planned. I'll clean up those pencil lines once I'm done inking. And tuck a cloud behind this. Let me put some clouds over on this side too. Cartoony clouds, not realistic clouds. I'm just cartooning, keeping it simple. <laughs> but then all those simple pieces added together create kind of a, a huge scene. feel like hearts need to come in here to keep it from looking like too much like scary flame. In my, my new book that's coming out soon, the Sharjah sketchbook, I got into for a while. In that, I got into drawing hearts with sort of these faces on them, like skull faces and wings. But I think that might look a little scary on this picture. I may make some changes to this if I look at it later today. I may want to change some parts of it. I can always go back and change the ink, even patch a piece of paper over something I want to change. I can add something into it. Like maybe, maybe I want to just darken this a little and create some lines that kind of bring the round inside of this egg around here. I can do that with pencil just to make sure which way the lines go. Then I'll go back with ink and trace over those. That's gonna make it look like a, a round inside there. I think that I need some shadow there to make the sun and the flower both look brighter. I need that contrast. So now let's go along these lines and see how that looks. This is still good for coloring because you can color around these little black lines. They're not gonna look absolutely black. It'll just look a little more shadowed in that inside the eggshell surface. This is cool. I like, I like just building something on the page and seeing where it takes us. We started this with a simple idea of a, a, a small character in the middle of something that maybe was adventurous or dangerous. I think I said adventure, a small character in the middle of adventure. And we've ended up with a whole lot more than that. A whole lot of other stuff to think about as we draw this. And in a couple minutes, I have to get back to my drawing of Freeman Colby, volume three. I'll get back to drawing from April and May, 1864. This has been a good little break from that. I hope you're having a good afternoon. Hope you're able to take a break and do something that relaxes you. Get away from all the worries or tasks you have to do and just create something, even if you're not sure where it's going or what it is.
draw it for somebody else, draw it for yourself. I'm going to take this one and I'll scan it and I'll post it to my Patreon uh, as a coloring page. And I would love to see if you feel like coloring it, I'd love to see what you do on it. <clears throat> I kind of want to color it. Maybe I'll do another video that is coloring it. I might go in and do some little dots around here, but that's I'll do that when I take another break later on. This has been about a half hour break for me. So that's a start. Again, I'm just doing a quick check for spaces and making sure I, if I have space, it's where I want space. And if I don't want space there, I may want to fill it with something. Like uh, this looks a little blank in here. Maybe we'll just put a couple asparagus blooming. There we go. All right, distraction, distraction, okay. I'm gonna go get back to work. Thanks for joining us. Um, remember, we'll be drawn all summer with Comics Camp and you can join over at merrickbennett.com slash comics dash camp. And I'm uh, looking forward to drawing with you again sometime. Be well, folks. <laughs>